the state of Texas is the one of the uh, top states with most number of executions in U.S. And there are currently 240 inmates on death row. Being on the death row means that they are already sentenced to death and they're waiting for the execution. Those people are 240 in one state. It's a lot of people. They're waiting to execute, kill a lot of people, 240 people. <clears throat> so because there are a lot of people, the average wait time is 14 years and nine months. So it's a really long time. You're sentenced to death, but on the average, you have to wait like 15 years. So for 15 years, you're waiting. Do I die today? Do I die tomorrow? And they're almost all males, except six women. And I saw all their photos on their website. And almost all men are bald. Not like naturally bald, but they shaved off their head. So guys, don't shave off your head. <laughs> And the state of Texas published the last words of 540 inmates uh, who have been executed in Texas since 1982. And I'll read some of the excerpts uh, today. Uh, the first one goes like this. It's in your handout. You may refer to it. And, uh, and this guy, Cornelius, said, this is what they said right before they like, turned the switch on. So they are strapped down on the electrical chair, and they are ready to die. And right before their death, they have the chance to give their last words, and these, this is what this person, Cornelius, said. I'd like to apologize to the victim's family. Ah, oh, no. Oh. I really can say, I don't think I can say anything that will help, but I hope through your God, you can forgive me. I'm definitely not the person now that I was then. I was sick, afraid, and looking for love in all the wrong ways. I caused you pain and grief beyond ever dreaming to cause someone of. I hope you will be able to forgive me. To my mother, I love you very much. Thanks, Jones. That's what Cornelius said before he died. Like this, this one, I expected a lot of inmates to say sorry. Sorry for what I've done, forgive me. But <clears throat> I have to say there were only a few. Uh, more inmates cried out they were innocent. I'll read you the next one. I am innocent, innocent, innocent. Make no mistake about this. I am an innocent man and something very wrong is taking place tonight. May God bless you all. I am ready. That's Lionel. That's what he said before he was executed. Remember these people are convicted felons. Uh, convicted murderers. Okay. Uh, and I was supposed to find how normal and peaceful and even loving they were, even to the point of their death. Uh, this one guy, John, said, tell mama I love her. That was his last word. So normal. As if He's just departing and just saying goodbye. I'll be back next year. Tell mama I love her. But instead he was dying. And a lot of inmates said they were going to heaven. Uh, I'll read you the next one. I love you all. We had a good service. And I will be with you. I will be waiting for you in heaven. 
Okay. Adios. That's all I have to say. Uh, these people were convicted. They were convicted of their crime. Their crime was murdering somebody, killing somebody. And that's why they were sentenced to death. An eye for an eye. And it feels almost surreal that they sound so normal. As convicted killers, they're supposed to be totally different from us. Like animals. How can you kill someone? Right? And yet, this person loves his mama. And they worry about their family they leave behind. They think about forgiveness. They ask for forgiveness. They say they forgive other people. Even if they claim that they're innocent. And some say they're sorry. And a lot of these inmates who are dying believe that they will go to heaven. Not because they are good, but because they believe in Jesus. What do you think? They don't sound so different from us. Now, raise your hand if you know you will not die. Anybody? Raise your hand. Any bold soul here? I'm not going to die. Anybody? No? You? <laughs> we were all created as eternal beings, but we will all end up dead. And every time I conduct funeral services, I proclaim this. You know, we have the picture of the deceased person on the back. And I have their, his, the deceased person's family, the, the grieving family on my right, and our uh, parish people on my left. And I proclaim, we are all going to follow his steps. And we are all going to die. At every funeral service. And so far, no one has objected. No one has said Whether young or old, they just sit there quiet because they all know that we're done. But do you know why we die? Do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6.23 Why do we die? Because of our sin. The wages of sin is death. The punishment for sin is death. We die because of our sin. Like the death row inmates who are waiting to be killed, we have done something terrible to deserve a death sentence. Right? We're dying. The Bible says we're dying because we have sinned. So that means we've done something terrible. We sinned. There's something terrible to deserve a capital punishment. That we are dying because of that. I am sorry to say this, but we too are on the death row. We're going to all die because of our sin. We're sentenced to death. As it is written, if you can see it in your handout, let's read it together. There is no one righteous, not even one. 
There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. We are all sinners. Because of our sins, we're sentenced to death. And we are all waiting for the execution. Unless we understand the weight of our sin, we cannot truly appreciate the grace of the cross. Unless we realize that we are sitting in a prison cell waiting to be executed, we cannot appreciate this person's love that he was willing to take our place in the prison and die in our place on the cross to set us free. According to the scripture, God created the human beings and he loved us. And he created a beautiful garden for us to enjoy. But he also made sure that we were not prisoners with no way out. If the Garden of Eden had no way out, it would be a prisoner. It would be a prison. They will have no choice but to stay there and to love God. But God made sure that we were not robots programmed to love God only. God gave us free will. And God made an exit door called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But with a huge blinking warning sign, death. Death. And with a, with a, with a message on the door, don't open. Do not open. If you go out, you will die. But the point is, the door was there. But nevertheless, we chose to leave. We chose to live our lives according to our wills. And outside of that door, death really was waiting for us. And we became slaves to the devil who planned to destroy us for eternal long life. As long as we exist. And amazingly, God didn't say, I told you so. See, I told you not to go out. No, but he didn't, he didn't say that. In search for his loved ones, God followed us out. And he found us imprisoned by the devil on our way to eternal damnation. He volunteered to take our place in the prison and pay the price for our ransom. To set us free from his eternal bondage and suffering, Jesus suffered and was crucified on the cross. Isaiah 53, 6 says, We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. What a great God. This is the central message of the Bible. That we have sinned. That we have fallen that we have no hope, that we were damned to eternity, that we were destined to spend the eternity in hell. But Jesus paid the price for us so that we don't have to. He took our sins away. He died in our place. He took our place in the electrical chair. What a, what a great God. 
Amen. Amen. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to How great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art. Oh, thank you. What an amazing God is. What an amazing God our Father is. We have received an amazing grace. Something that we do not deserve. We have received an enormous favor from God. Remember the price that was paid for your salvation. We remember what Jesus had to go through to set you free. To, to wipe the slate clean, to make you not guilty of your sin. So do not wander off and be enslaved to sin again. Do not go back to the tree of knowledge of good and evil and take the fruit to live your life in your own way. You will never be the master of your life. That's not how it works. If you want to be the master of your life, you will end up enslaved to Satan. Satan will not leave you alone. He will take advantage of you. Live a different life. Be thankful. Be thankful for everything. I mean everything. Amen. Because you are set free from the bondage. Because you are, you are set free from this death row. Mm -hmm. uh, for about a week now, I developed this, this problem on my leg. And it's bothering me so much. I can't even walk right. Um, and I have to do Teshimbang because I'm, I'm also doing um, in charge of a parish too and we, are, we were planning for our Jiju celebration and, and, and other things and I have to worry about so many things and I have to go through different houses every day and pray and preach and, and then move and then pre uh, preach and pray and then move and then preach and pray and then move and and have a lunch and then go to another house and then pray, uh, preach and then pray and then every day. And I had this, this wound on my leg. You know, I couldn't even walk right, but you know, we are busy, we are, we are on a fast track, so I, I walk and I'm like, oh, I fall off. <laughs> At home, I can't even walk. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, on the outside, I can't do this. I'm just, okay. Oh, oh. Right? And it wouldn't go away. It wouldn't go away. The pain wouldn't go away. It wouldn't heal up. I didn't know what was wrong with it. And I was getting really upset. I was like, God, this is not the right time. I've got so many things to do. I can't, I can't just be sick and just stay home. I, I can't tend to this one. I have to move around, I have to kneel, and I have to, I, I can't do that with the slack, please God. And then the Holy Spirit gave me a tip, little tip. You know, why don't you consider this as you joining Jesus Christ for his suffering? You know, the, the Palm Sunday is coming up, the Passion Week is coming up, consider this 
as, as a token, you know, for you to remember the pain of Jesus. And I said, well, why not? Why not? And I just began to thank God. God, thank you for this. You know what? The, the problem is still there, but it's not bothering me anymore. You know, I just thank God. And it's, it's just all that, that resentment in my heart was gone. And same as before, as if I don't have any problems. I was thanking God. I was praising God. Why do we thank God? Why does God say to us, be thankful? In whatever circumstances, be thankful. Why does he say that? Because we already received so much. Amen. Because we already received such a huge grace and blessing Amen. from God. Amen. Because God has already given us so much through Jesus Amen. Christ and, and the price that he paid on the cross to save us, to set us free, to give us future, to give us hope, to give us heaven as our home. We have received so much. We can be thankful no matter what. Just be thankful. Be thankful. Thank you, God. Let's all say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Ayakeo. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Little bit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's great. And let's turn to someone next to us and say thank you. Thank you for being there. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. All right, let us pray.